What do you get when you make an operating system simple to use, not even needing internet access? You base it on Debian, but your whole technical and philosophical approach is different. You get endless OS. That's what we're looking at today on eBuzz Central. Today's video is made possible by the eBuzz Central store. If you want Linux apparel or Linux items, and you want it based on Arch or all the way to Linux Mint, the eBuzz Central store is your one-stop shop. We have t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, tank tops, long sleeve shirts, hats, phone cases, stickers. Pretty much if you can think of it, we have it. So zip on over. If you don't find something you like and want to see something that's not on the store, let us know in the comments below. Now back over to the Endless OS webpage. We are presently on Endless OS's website, which is EndlessOS.com. I'll be sure to put that link in the description below. And if you come to the page, this is basically what you see. It says technology that enriches life. Endless OS comes preloaded with hundreds of useful resources for students and families, and even works without an internet access. The Endless OS operating system is simple and easy for anyone to use. Once installed, no internet is required and it's provided by the Endless OS Foundation. The OS is free for individuals and non-commercial use up to 500 computers. And then you can scroll down and it kind of goes over the different content and apps you can get, whether you're using it for school or entrepreneurship, playing games, or learning resources. And then if you go back up top, you have the overview, you have free download. This is where you want to go and download it. If you want to install it side by side with Windows, you would click right here. And then if you want to try or install it on a computer, you would go down here and choose your preference, whether it was desktop in 64-bit, virtual machine 64-bit, Raspberry Pi, Pinebook Pro, and then of course other options down here. But that's where you would go to download it. And then up top you have Endless OS, OS updates and forum, frequently asked questions and support, and about the Endless OS Foundation. So what we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna zip on over to the Endless OS desktop. And as you can see, it's starting to boot up. It has a nice welcome screen. And now it has booted to the desktop. When you download Endless OS, put it on a USB or open it into a virtual machine, this is the screen you're gonna be met with. You just have to pick your language. We're gonna go ahead and choose that. And it says try Endless OS by running it from a USB or reformat it to this computer. I'm going to go ahead and click try. And I'm going to go ahead and click English. And now right here it says automatically save and send usage statistics and problem reports to Endless. I don't ever do this even though it says all data is anonymous. I'm going to go ahead and move forward. Privacy, you can turn location services off if you want to. I always choose to no matter if it's on my phone or on my PC. And then it says you're ready to try Endless OS, so let's start using it. And our desktop comes up, and as you can see, it's quite a bit different than a lot of your Linux distributions that you're going to see out there. It actually has this as your main screen. You've got your applications right here. You've got a search function up here. And then if you right-click out here, you can change the background, display settings, or settings. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the different backgrounds we have. And then as those open up, you can tell over here by your settings that this is definitely a customized version of GNOME. I'm going to go ahead and just pick a different background to be different. So let's choose that one right there. And it changes and we will close out of that and we have a new background. Now down at the bottom you do have a single panel. If you come over here you'll see this little thing that looks like volume. If you click on it it'll say no apps are open. When you do have apps open this will actually open them up. You can close them or switch between different apps. And then down here we've got the sunflower. Let's click on it. This is your settings, social accounts, give us feedback, help, lock, power off, log out. Let's go ahead and go to settings. And this is where we just were to change our wallpaper. You've got your network, Bluetooth, your background settings, notifications. You can adjust how your notifications work. If you're familiar with GNOME, this will look very, very normal to you. Then you have search, online accounts, users, default applications, date and time, and then of course about, okay? We'll go ahead and close out of that. We'll open this back up. You've got social accounts. Let's go ahead and open that up. And this just brings your settings back up 
to open up your Google, Nextcloud, Microsoft, Flickr, Foursquare, or Microsoft Exchange. One more time, give us feedback, help. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. You've got date and time right here, battery power, volume, and then of course your internet connection. If you come over to the left, you've got show apps. There are no apps to open. Right next to it, you have reformat. Then you have the App Center. Let's go ahead and take a peek at their App Center. And this is one of the things I really do like about this distribution is the App Center seems to be quick and responsive. So right here, it gives you some recommended. Now, if you wanted to go up here and do a search for something like OBS, you could, and it brings OBS up right there. Now, you'll notice on a lot of Linux distributions, when you do a search like this, it won't show because it has to reload or refresh the repositories. These seem to work right out of the box, which I really like. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back. And like I said, it gives you some suggested right here. Microsoft Teams, MindTest, Blender, Missile Math, Zoom, or you can go up here to Learning, and it'll open up things like GPredict, Tux or Math Composition, Calcium, Calculate, and then you've got Reference and News, Games, learn to code, multimedia work utilities, and dev tools. So you have quite a selection of software that you can download onto the operating system. So let's go ahead and back up here and I'm gonna go ahead and close. Come back down to the bottom, you've got Hack, which seems to be a video game. I'm gonna go ahead and lower the volume. Hello Endless OS, I'm Ada and let me be the first to welcome you to Hack. So this looks like a game of some sorts. I'm sure the kids would enjoy it, but I'm going to go ahead and close out of this at the moment. Okay. It does come with Chromium as your internet browser and then your files. Let's go ahead and open that up. Let's move this over here. Let's maximize. It's just your regular files application that you would get with any GNOME based operating system. You've got your usual suspects over here. You've got your home folders right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. And then if we come up here, there's nothing really different. You do have your videos, Shotwell, Rhythmbox, System, App Center, Calibre, Utilities, which has your clocks, settings, cheese, screenshot, document scanner, Prezero, System Monitor, and Terminal. Let's go ahead and open up Terminal. And I wanna see if they have HTOP installed. And they do have HTOP installed. I, at present, have three gigabytes of RAM issued to this machine. At rest with just the terminal open, we're using about 973 megabytes, which is pretty typical for a GNOME-based operating system. And then I do have two CPUs issued to this machine. We're using about 5% of those. So, not too bad. It's a little heavy for me in the resource usage. But, like I said, typical of a GNOME distribution. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Back over to utilities. And you've got archive manager, text editor, and calculator. And then work. You do have LibreOffice installed out of the box. And let's go ahead and open that up and see what version it is. And it has opened up. Let's go up to help. Let's slide down to about LibreOffice. And it is 7.3.0.3, so it's the most recent version of LibreOffice. All in all, guys, that's a quick look at Endless OS. I don't think it'll be a lot of people's cup of tea, but I do think it does fit a niche out there, especially for those who have children who want a more Chrome OS type feel and want to be able to have the kids be able to use something that doesn't have to be online all the time. Do you agree or disagree? Please let me know in the comments below. And make sure if you get a chance to zip on over to the eBuzz Central store, take a look around. If you see something you like, go ahead and pick it up. And if there's something you would like to see on the store that's not there, please let us know in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a member to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.